Wow. The inside. They put the fire in there. Fire, yeah. like evening time. Mm. But early in the morning, you come and cook. The moth. The yes. moth. In cook. the morning, they cut the moth. Even then, they put fire here. Just to go inside. How are you doing? Come. Thank you. I like your tattoo. Thank you. I have a Bob Marley tattoo. He's very nice to me. A quote right here by Bob. Yeah, he's nice. Disturbed gin. It is small. Hundred percent. Hi, how are you? Fine. Get your tattoo, talk hello. Ah, oh, yeah, you call it Dr. Jerobu. The input is in that container on fire. So that's where it burns? From, yeah. So the heat. Make it boil, boil, boil. Then the evaporation go through the pipe and come here as water. Wow. That's the liquid you saw inside the palm tree. Yeah. The, uh -huh. And the palm tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could take it. To the mouth. Mm. Just soak it. Don't chew. Don't chew. Oh. That's a lick. <laughs> if it's dry, you can chew and eat and swallow. Mm. That's nice too. Really good. The pepper, the onions together, you can see how it smells, it smells very nice. around the area here. We will go there too. The palace, they open the gate for you to enter. If you are not part of the group, they know. Because they have a sign. They use a lot of uh, leaves. You know why I don't? Mm. They climb the roof to the top. Now the roof is old. 
So we change and bring the ladder. How old is this one? Ah. <laughs> this I grow. More than yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, see the darkness we are standing in now. If you stay in this for a day, when they take you out, you will, have, you, you will go partially blind. Even right now, when you walk out of here and you look at, straight at the sun, it will hurt your eye. The female dungeons, two rooms held 500 African men. Mathematically, we'll say that each of the five rooms here will hold about 200 people. This was where they were sleeping, did urinate and defecate. With wooden buckets placed around, so if you want to visit the toilet, you go to the bucket and do it in it. But think about it, they were in shackles and chains for 24 hours and 3 months of their stay in the dungeons. These holes were the only source of light and air. You have diarrhea, defecating on yourself comes to you always very easy. From time to time, African servants will just come into the dungeons and clean the place up. And the people will come back and stay here. Until when the slave trip was almost over, then the Europeans decided to stop cleaning. So instead of them cleaning, they would rather cover everything up with dirt or sand and bring the people back to sleep on top of it. And at that time, the floors were so high that as the people moved up and down, it, the waste was all the way up to their uncle level. Now ladies and gentlemen, they fed them twice a day. Food you eat is nothing to satisfy you. Think about the fact that you eat in your palm. How much food can your palm hold? Mm. Knowing for a fact that there are about 1,000 people here, all of them struggling for that food. But then the hands they used in eating was never washed. Because they took their last bath at Asenma's slave market, about 31 kilometers away from here. After taking your last bath, you walk from there to here. If you're driving from there to here, it will take you at least about an hour. How much more walking? You get here very filthy. And since it says last bath, it means last bath, you don't take a single shower. Imagine yourself staying in the fifth room for three months. And by the time the people left the dungeons, some of them were dead. They pick up the dead bodies, they threw the dead bodies into the sea. But they always tied the bodies with stones or chemicals to sink the bodies. Because they know that if they just drop the bodies the next day, they will see the body lying on the shore converting people into becoming Christians. Because of that, here in Cape Coast Castle, they had the first church of England built on top of the male slave dungeons. They will stay there worshiping God. But as they did, African men were underneath the church going through this, and together Christianity and slavery went on here for almost 200 years. Looking at the whole thing, this place wasn't even called a castle by them, it was called a factory. A factory not for producing, but pens for holding gold, ivory, spices, African men, women, and so many other materials they were taking from around here. When we go out, we are going to see the female punishment cell. Designed for African women that will never allow themselves or the Europeans to abuse them sexually. Those that will stand up for themselves, try to get out of the castle and everything, they will send them there for about a week maximum, give them food and water once a day. And tell you what, the money they made from the slave trade and whatever else, that was what they used in building today's Europe and the United States of America we see now. In shackles and chains, men and women with kids queued up on this corridor and were forced to go out. As they walked out, people lost their names, their dignity, their property, family, language, freedom, everything was taken away from them. Auctioning them here, they sent them to the court here. That's where they were branded before they were separated into the dungeons. You know, this place is called Palava Hall. The name is Portuguese, which means word. 
to right where people gave their word over prices of black men and women, which they considered as commodities. And talk of commodities, this is what brings into mind the triangular trade between Europe, Africa, and the Americas. It was a cycle for almost 400 years where Europeans would come to Africa all the time with very cheap European items like guns, whiskey, rum, teacups, mirror syrup, ceramic plates and other things. And here in Africa they would get African men, women, gold and so many things which they moved out of Africa. They get to the Americas and they leave off African men and women in the fields, gold, sugar cane, cotton, tobacco, coffee and so many other things. According to the history, the Portuguese were the Europeans who came to this place first. They came here 1471. Then they built the castle 1482. They were here to trade and also to spread Christianity. They were here for gold, ivory, spices and many more. So the Portuguese also brought guns, gunpowder, tobacco, alcoholic beverages. They even brought mirror in exchange of gold from the locals. And because they were getting a lot of gold, they named this place Elmina. So Elmina means the mine. It is not the original name. But before the coming of the Portuguese, the original name used to be Anumansa. Anuma is a, in English is inexhaustible water. But because they were getting a lot of gold, they had an impression that this place was in abundance of fish. They named the place Elmina. You can also call this place Edina. That's another name. Yeah, Edina, according to the history, it's wrongly pronounced Portuguese word. Because when the Portuguese came here, they saw this place to be um, a village. And in their language, they pronounce village Aldeia. So Aldeia in Portuguese means village. And it is believed that the locals at that time could not come out with the pronunciation well. And it was corrupted to Edina. So both Elmina and Edina we are using currently are not the original names. And Omansa used to be the name. Now, when the Portuguese arrived, initially this castle wasn't built. So they said they were sleeping in their big ships on the sea. So all the goods from here and then to the ships. And as time went on, the trade was expanding or it was booming. So they needed places to sleep and also to store their goods. So the leader of the Portuguese went to a chief because when they came here, there was a chief around. The name of the chief is Nana Kwamina Ansa. And then the one who led the Portuguese here, the name of the leader is Don Diego de Azambuja. So they went to the chief several times for this piece of land to be given. But initially, the chief was, uh, they said the chief was reluctant to give out the land, citing future cultural differences on persuasions and assurances the land was given later. So they brought building materials together with workmen to put up this castle in 1482. So when they completed it, they named it after one of their saint patrons. The name of the man is St. George. That is why we call it St. George, St. George's Castle. Yeah. Now, so at that time, the room that you see on the ground floor of this castle served as warehouses that's where they were keeping their goods. Now, when slave trade started, 
the same warehouses were converted into dungeons where human beings were held. Slave trade started in 1500 or in the early part of 16th century and then that began what is known as triangular trade. So the Portuguese started it and according to the history, the Portuguese spent 155 years here. About 400, and then the male slaves were about 600. So in total, the castle held approximately 1,000 slaves at the time. Mm. At the time, at the time, 1,000. And the cannonball you see there, have you seen it? This is what they used to punish the female slaves. We have missionaries, merchants, the governor and assistant. So some of them were harassing the women sexually. So they said those who resisted rape, those who tried to escape, those who were fighting the masters to be released were brought here. They have to chain it to your leg. And then the person will be allowed to stand here whether there is rain or sunshine. They did this to put fear and the rest of the female slaves in the dungeon. So next time, when you are called to do something, quickly you have to obey. So that is the purpose of this kind of They connected pipes like this, right on top of the building. So whenever it rains, it passes through. The water was filtered over there. Then one we harvested it. So this one covers the entire floor. We are all standing on it. Mm. And when it is full, we have 20,000 gallons of water. 20,000 for domestic use only. Now, they said anytime the governor of the castle wants to rape one of the women, this is where he stands. Yes, and they said some of the women will be assembled as we are. He chooses the one he likes. They have to fetch water for the woman to wash down. Maybe the person might have been in the dungeon for so long without taking her bath. And after the humiliation, they force the woman to pass through. Let's have a The trap door on top, they open it and up the door straight to the governor's bed. And after the rape, the woman comes back as a slave. Yes, and because of what happened, they said a lot of them got pregnant. And then those who got pregnant were freed. Because no one would buy a pregnant slave. But some of the slaves were from far away. You see, some from Nigeria, Ivory Coast, Togo, Mali, Burkina, for so many places they were brought here. And because some of them were from long distances, when they were free, they could not trace their origin. So what they did was that they built houses outside the castle to accommodate them. Later they brought the children back. These children were educated in this castle. But they were light skinned. Mm -hmm. That's why they said formal education across this country started here, from here to Cape Coast Castle, and later it sprang up to so many places in the country today. At that time, they used this one. But because the castle is very close to the sea, the original bars are getting rusty, so the bars have all been replaced. So we have two churches. When the Portuguese came, they built their church at the other side. That's the first Christian church in Ghana. It's a Catholic church, Roman Catholic. When Dutch took over, they were not Catholic. Dutch were Protestants. So they also built their own church, ironically, on top of this dungeon. So they were worshiping God up. And then human beings were down, also crying. So they do worship God? Yeah. But they were here to spread Christianity as well. Through the brutalities there, they were all packed in chains. They forced them to pass through this. And when you pass through, you get to the door of no return. Mm. These bars were not there at that time. British placed the bars when they bought the castle to make sure no one or nobody falls down. There were steps at that time. Today the steps have been destroyed. As you can see, there is a drainage system constructed. There were dungeons for about 600 male slaves. The female slaves were about 400. 
the governor of the castle was on top of everybody. He, he lived up there. Have you seen? Assistant governor follows. The rest of the rooms were for soldiers. We have missionaries and this part for the merchants. They divided the church into two. They used the ground floor as their auctioning hall. Upper floor, junior soldiers mess. They built their own church. And it's old, old Dutch. When the Dutch were here, one of their governors died here. So they wrote this to remember the governor. The governor is from Zealand. He was the last director general of West Indies Company. The governor was in charge over the north and south coasts of Africa. This governor arrived here on the 16th January, 1758, and died 12 March, the same year when he was 21 years. And this fact is a tribute written by a priest. The name is A. Andres. The priest is from here. And this one is a village in Zealand. So what the priest is saying is that when the governor was around, when he was around, he was very humble, honest, and God fearing. Governor will start to choose the one he likes and up 